Fighting Povetkin, he is a mandatory challenger. Each belt has a different mandatory challenger. IBF has a mandatory, which will be Puri Level Fury. WBA is Povetkin, but each one of them has mandatory challenges and I have to be ready to face any one of them at any time. We made it look easy, so they expect that it's going to be easy. But Povetkin is not a pushover. I watch all of his best fights. David Price, good knockout. He probably has one of the best knockout roles in heavyweight boxing right now. Variety of punches, uppercuts, left strokes. Um, a Russian Mike Tyson. He looks good, he looks good. He knows what he's doing. The man can fight, and he's a world-class fighter. So uh, it's not going to be as easy as people expect. But same expectation they have is the same expectation I have, and that's to win. What did it take out of me to win? A bit of blood, a bit of sweat. You've got to read your opponent early on, what they're good at. Get hit with one and don't get hit with it again. Because early on, everyone can take a good punch. After round five, six, they can't take that same punishment anymore. Just read Povetkin nice and early and eliminate his, uh, his best punches. Povetkin style doesn't, doesn't really use a jab much, but it's interesting because a fighter doesn't use their jab much, uses their opponent's jab in the sense that they wait for their opponent to throw their jab and he's trying to count them, which is quite dangerous. So it's weird, because as like I said, Povetkin doesn't use his, but Povetkin's using, for instance, mine. So he's using my jab to fall short so he can count them. You have to be confident when you're throwing your punches. With a fire like Povetkin, I think you don't want to go straight down the pipe because they can just swing one over and meet you down the middle, so you've got to kind of set your punches up round the side, bang, 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 come back here, let them fall into the right. So you start to learn about setting up punches and feints, and it makes it very difficult for someone like him to land his uh, knockout punches. I have to do it with a bit of uh, velocity, ferociousness, and get that knockout, because that Parker fight was just, just schooling the champion. You know, don't take no punishment. He's supposed to be the fastest guy in the division. You know, and uh, just annihilated him.
from Wembley Stadium, London, England. Let's get this party started! entrance to the ring, the reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua!
professional rap recording star, Nines! To my hustle, I grind all day. I see you shining, eh? Hey. Smell that gelato from a mile away. I see you shining, eh? Hey. And I'll still be a legend if I die today. Yeah. I got packs on the trolley, just rap shit to hold me. I got, but I still catch me and hold me. The streets know me for getting beat. My daughter had a first hold when she was really hard. I caught a little kick, that's a slight loss. Got my lawyers like Harvey and Mike Ross. And me and Scraps couldn't give a about rap. Even though when nice with it's always in the trap I stay strapped like some I only put packs on the end crows You was inside with your Netflix I was in the truck, I was wired in the metro Me and Streets left the chest like a pole trying to impress Now I'm turning bro. Be obsessed with my P, I just hit Then I'm running to the M-I-S to the T, it's nice I see you looking blind today I see you shining, eh? Shout out to my hustlers that die in the day
spectacular scene here at Wembley Stadium. Something out of ancient Rome. Talk about going up, putting a man on the pedestal, literally on the pedestal. Anthony Joshua in his prime, 28 years old, six foot six, 246, a dreadnought in the era of the super heavyweights. Alexander Povetkin past his prime, age 39. 6'2", and relatively small for a super heavyweight in this day and age at 222 pounds, but he has a chance of a lifetime here tonight. The rules, same as we've had all night, no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell. Only the referee can stop the fight. Brian Kenny, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sergio Mora here ringside. What Joshua Sugar Ray smiling, fist pumping the fans as he's coming in. Remarkable, what do you think of his demeanor? Affable, relaxed, walking in here tonight among 80,000. You don't see this every day. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's huge. Joshua in the ring, Pavetkin is there. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from Wembley Stadium, London, England, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing in association with World of Boxing Production Company proudly present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, EA Sports, Lynx, and JD Sports. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, President and Steward in Charge, Charles Giles. The International Boxing Federation, President, Daryl Peebles. The International Boxing Organization, Ed Levine. The World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. And the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. Timekeeper, Stephen Pucci. The three judges scoring from Monaco, Jean Robert Lane. From Italy, Matteo Montella. And from Venezuela, Carlos Supra. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Steve Gray. And now the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. Boxing fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on Sky Sports, Box Office, and The Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Ivan Kirpa, wearing black, standing six feet two, Official weight, 15 stone, 12 pounds. This 2004 Olympic gold medalist now has an outstanding professional record consisting of 34 victories. 24 big wins by knockout, only one defeat. He's undefeated for five consecutive years. He's the WBA, number one heavyweight challenger in the world. From Chekhov, Russia, Former WBA heavyweight world champion, Dami Gospodar, Ruski Vitez, Alexander, Sasha Pogieta. Across the ring, heading out of the blue corner with his trainer, Rob McCracken, wearing white and standing six feet six, Officially weighing in at 17 stone, 8 pounds, 5 ounces. He's a 2012 Olympic gold medal champion and now as a professional, a perfect record. 21 fights, 21 victories, 20 wins by knockout. From London, the fighting pride of the United Kingdom, the reigning, defending, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua.
Okay, boys, if I call break, you take one step back. Don't let any punches go on the back of the head and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. 80,000 plus here at Wembley Stadium, live in London. Brian Kenny, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sergio Mora here ringside. There is the heavyweight champ, three belts in his possession. But is he the heavyweight king? Anthony Joshua still with something to prove, even as he sits atop of the world. Round one for the heavyweight championship, Joshua and Povetkin. You can see the size difference right away with Anthony Joshua. We expected this, but the problem here is that Povetkin knows how to fight small. Six of his last ten opponents are over six foot five. This is a compact, small heavyweight. He's powerful, but he knows how to loop and time shots over bigger men. Ray Leonard, I have to ask you first. You fought in the Superdome against Roberto Duran. But what, what is it like fighting under these conditions in a stadium? I have no idea. <laughs> um, it's exciting, though. It's, it, this is it. This is the big, the big stage. I mean, there is a roar, a constant roar here in this stadium right now. Povetkin again, 39 years old, but the chance of a lifetime. An incredible amateur athlete, kickboxing world champion, Olympic gold medalist, and now gets a shot at the title. Only has one professional loss, but he has failed drug tests, a checkered professional career. But here he is, maintained his standing and his ranking, and he gets a shot at the champ. You know, when guys are this big uh, and powerful, you can always expect uh, an early knockdown or, or either guy get in trouble. But looking at Joshua, he's very, uh, he's so sharp. Look at him. Joshua keeping him at bay right now because he knows he's, he's dealing with a, a thing, good body shot there by Joshua. Joshua yeah. immediately out with the right hand coming back with the hook and just missing with the hook. They practiced that shot right there, Kenny. That was a that was a weird shot, you know, for Joshua. It's such a big man to throw that right hook to the body right when Povetkin was going to open up. That was planned be between him and his uh, trainer. And you can tell, I mean, at his size, everything he, every power shot he throws has tremendous menace. It's a chance to end it. So much energy in this stadium, even during this feeling out process in round one as Povetkin takes his chance. There's a tension in the air because the thing about Povetkin, he is a tricky timing fighter and Rob McCracken really was worried about that sneakiness because he's very adept at tying these big tall men. And look, right there, he tried a sneaky right uppercut. Josh has been working on his uppercut as well. There he returns the favor. Both these guys throw punches that heavyweights normally don't throw. It's really exciting. And especially the left hook. Both guys need to be aware of that short line left hook. Pavek in there with, with a short hook in return as he's able to counter. Anthony Joshua said this was going to be a violent game of chess, and I don't know whether that's ominous or not, but he is Joshua fighting the Russian. Povetkin comes in with the jab, lands a hook at the end of round one, and he sends Anthony Joshua back on his heels. It was an uppercut. You never expect an uppercut from a shorter fighter like that, but it was an uppercut that snuck in there, caught his attention. Right. Don't take right hands to the body, come on. Yeah. Okay. Easy 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 Relax a little bit. Don't take right hands to the body, towel. okay? Give us a towel. Deep breath. Give us a towel, Max. Just get your breath. Get your breath. Come on. Good head movement, all right? There, we, there it is. That is a nice three-punch combination. It was a three-punch combination. It was a jab, a right uppercut, and a left hook around the guard. It's an, it's not a, it's, it's an unorthodox combination, but that's the type of stuff that you have to throw at Anthony Joshua. Not only that, given the size disadvantage to get all three of those shots in, hard shots. That and and that might have swayed the round for uh, for Pavekin. Right, what? Yeah, there was, there was really no harm done otherwise. But that punch proved that he could hurt. Yep. Joshua. Just at the moment that you see Joshua as being just one punch away, Alexander Povetkin shows he is here for real. Joshua opens up round two with a sharp jab. Joshua coming out with a bloody nose, and he wants to make a statement saying, hey, listen, you stole that round with that last flurry, but I'm in control here. Povetkin throwing short, hard shots. That's what he specializes in, Brian. He knows how to time punches. He's he's adept at fighting these tall guys, and there it is again. It was a, and there it was is blood. Right. Blood is flowing from the nose of Anthony Joshua. 
I've been telling him every, I've been telling everybody that listens that Povetkin is going to be a dangerous fighter because he knows how to fight tall men. It's the timing. He knows how to throw the right punches as a shorter fighter. He's able to get that leverage off his left hook and right hand, I should say, because he's inside. And Joshua definitely appears to be bothered. I mean, beyond the blood, look, it's not getting into the eye. It's obviously coming from the nose. But he looks a little bothered by that, don't you think, Ray? Yes, I mean, he, 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 he felt the power of Povetkin. I mean, who knows? Maybe the nose is broken. I you know that it could be damaged. Well, it was broken with the Takam fight. Maybe it rebroke. And that uh, obviously impairs your breathing. Anthony Joshua being tested immediately. This was supposed to be just another part of the coronation. The crowd gets loud again in support, but he's facing a real test immediately. See Sharp that hook again from Pavekin. Pavekin is timing that jab. He's timing all these punches. He's a looping fighter. This is what Robert McCracken was worried about in fighting Pavekin. The fact that he knows how to fight taller men with these sharp counters. And then he throws decoy punches to the torso and body. He's just an excellent, smart fighter. He's whipping those hooks. He's whipping those hands around. Roundhouse punches. See that right hand of the body that he threw right there? He's setting an uh, overhand punch afterwards. But look, Joshua returns a the favor there. Joshua looks good when he is flashing out that long, hard jab. Povetkin is able to close the gap right away. I have to say, he's, he's able to step in and land that right hand. Because he's inching his front foot forward little by little. He's throwing shots where you, where you least expect them. He leaping, has quick hands. And leaping in with the left hook. I believe there may have been a clash of heads. But uh, Povetkin is, is on a mission. But he Povetkin throws those punches, especially when he's able to get inside, get closer. Uh, to Joshua, he, he throws he throws a number of punches. He throws uppercuts, left hooks, and meaningful shots as well. Right, you're right, Brian. But he sets them up. He sets up those punches. Like right there, he missed because he didn't set it up. He got a little greedy there, but he needs to set up the punches right there. See the right hand to the body makes Joshua question where is he going, upstairs or downstairs? And then Joshua's literally about letting his hands go because the looping shot's going to come over the top. Final seconds of round two. Alexander Povetkin with a shot at glory. He has hurt Anthony Joshua. Joshua with a nice jab. That scored straight to the face of Povetkin. Povetkin with his mixed legacy as a pro. Extremely accomplished Olympic gold medalist. Only one pro loss. But again, has never won a pro title. Has the failed drug test. Challenges for a title now here tonight. And he has Joshua hurt already. Just don't let him come through over the yeah. top, okay? Just sit looking in front of him. Right? Okay, put some ice on his nose. Put some ice on his nose. Duardo. Jesus, boy. Vishal. And after the pause, the right hand is here. Left spoke, a длинный длinny такой. Получит. Раз, два. Право вышел. Duardo, and сбоку такой. Полу снизу, полу сбоку бегает. Напрягай, напрягай, заставляй его. Another look as the blood is flowing from Anthony Joshua and a hard right hand lands from Povetkin. It appeared as we go to round number three, Ivan Kerpa in the corner was looking for even shorter, sharper shots from Povetkin. Yeah, for sure. And they both touched gloves after the round ended, which shows respect for each other. Povetkin has earned that respect already. Of course, Joshua's corner has to work hard now to try to stem that blood and stop it from being a distraction. Look, obviously, he could be in pain from that shot. Another right hand. Beautiful and Pavekin fires an uppercut as well. That just missed. But you can see tight, hard shots from Pavekin. I told everyone that would listen that Pavekin was going to be problems for Joshua just because of the timing. He just has that, that well-timed overhand right, left, and he sets him up with body shots. He's just a very clever, sharp fighter, Pavekin is. You saw the power punches landed there, at least according to the copy box stats, and there is an advantage from Pavekin, and, and clearly landing meaningful shots as well, not just scoring shots, but shots that will hurt Anthony Joshua. I feel Joshua should keep, keep him outside the use of his left hand with his height and reach advantage. Now because Joshua was landing that, that jab in the last round, but has, has Povetkin won the first two rounds? Povek, he maybe first, but he, he's able to get inside closer, and, and that's where his power is, in those little short uh, thrown punches, the hooks and the uppercut. 
Another hook from Josh over there. How about you, Sergio? How are you scoring it? It could I mean, be 1-1. It could be 2-0. Good left hook there by uh, Pavetkin. But uh, right now, the momentum and the sway is going to Pavetkin. That's what sure could look. No one expected Pavetkin to be in this fight. I did, of course. And even one that would listen, I said that Pavetkin was going to give him trouble. And right now, we're seeing two rounds in, he's giving him trouble already. Josh Sergio, Wood. nobody was listening to you, were they? <laughs> Nobody's listening to you, Sergio. Now we believe you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. I tell you what, no, Pavetkin comes in. These are short, hard shots. You wonder about his stamina, but you should be on top of just thinking about, hey, where are we as far as scoring rounds in case it goes to the card? Pavetkin, again, 39 years old. Maybe his best chance, though, are in these early rounds. A preserved 39 years old. That's the difference. He's fought, he lost one time versus a big, great Hall of Fame champion in Vladimir Klitschko. No shame in that. Now he's fighting a big, equally big-sized uh, guy in Joshua, 6'6". Six six. So you don't think he picked up lessons from fighting a guy as big as Joshua? Of course he did. That's what he's implementing now. Joshua is also not fighting very tall, Ray. Don't you think? I mean, he's kind of hunched over and you know, bringing himself back down to Pavetkin's level. Good right hand by Joshua, and he needs to box. He needs to stay, keep, mm -hmm. keep his man for a couple more rounds. See what he has in his gas tank. You can see Alexander Pavetkin is a formidable man in front of Joshua. You can feel the fighting spirit as he's coming forward. I don't like Joshua holding that left hand so low like that because Pavetkin has excellent timing. It could be a short right hand. Woo! That jab. Yes. Exciting start here at Wembley Stadium. Unexpected. Well-timed overhand right there, which is how he's made his living, his bread and butter, is timing these bigger men over the top of right hands or left hooks. But he sets them up with power shots. Clean little left hook right there. Those bother you. Look, obviously in a professional fight, you're trying to do damage. But Pavetkin, you can see, is trying to hurt Joshua. Every shot, I'm trying to hurt you. Every punch that Pavetkin throws is, is serious. It's a serious, yep. serious delivery. Exciting start here at Wembley Stadium. Round four, championship rounds. They go to 12 here for the heavyweight championship of the world. Again, Deontay Wilder has a claim on a title in the WBC. Tyson Fury was the man who first beat Vladimir Klitschko. They will fight in December, but right here, we wonder, will we see a new heavyweight kingpin? Alexander Povetkin sharp in the first three rounds. Povetkin is really uh, effective with that left hook. Clash of seem, heads. There seems to be a cut. Clash of the heads there, accidental. Of Povetkin. Pavekin, it's not as if Joshua isn't landing either. Joshua is flashing out some jabs. He is landing. He's getting some scoring shots. But to see him bloodied and rattled early on, as we see now, Povetkin, as you guys mentioned, also blood. As he turns around here, we get a better look at him. Blood is coming from, I believe, above his eye. It was a clash of heads, I believe. When, when fighters are are bleeding. That's why my trainer's never been a fan of white gloves or white trunks because when you start bleeding, it just looks bad. What I see now is Joshua is now able to to kind of measure his man with his jab. Well, a couple change things too. I have yet to see it up close from where we are, but it appears to be, appears to be just above that left eye. And if it's above the left eye just there, it will bleed into the eye, which obviously affects the fighter. See the gash right there. Normally, if it's not on the eyelid, it's okay. This is borderline eyelid and eyebrow. The medic might have to take a look at that, but right now, it doesn't seem like it's impeding his vision too much. That was a surprising angle thrown by with uh, the left hook, Oof. thrown by Quebecan. But so I think that uh, Joshua is aware of that now. That is a, a wicked long right hand. Quebecan able to get out of the way. You're, you're right, though, Sergio. Brian Kenny, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sergio Mora. I mean, Joshua has that left hand laying low. Very low, and, and as good as timing that Pavekin has, it's just a dangerous mistake. And like I said earlier, McCracken, Joshua's trainer, he knows how dangerous a, a well-timed punch can be. You don't have to be as powerful as Joshua to hurt the other opponent. It's timing that matters. It's a well-placed punch, and 
Pavekin is a gold medalist. He knows how to place punches. He knows how to time these big, strong men. It, it really is incredible that Pavekin is in, in this fight winning, in my opinion, so far. Final 30 seconds of the fourth round. Each man is throwing potential knife-ending shots. There's that shot again right there. He, he, uh, Joshua's going to have to be worried about that looping shot for another six, seven rounds. Blood on both sides. Pavetkin walking in here serious about his chances to be the heavyweight champion. In every punch he throws, that's evident. Look, right now I want to see jabs by Joshua. In, in quiet rounds, I just want to see flaking jabs. Just touch something. When you're quiet like that, it just looks bad on your behalf. Sneaky uppercut, overhand right. Now, did that cut from that punch? Yeah, it was. That's all right. So it was from a punch, actually. We're trying to get a better look at it as we go to the fifth round. And it appeared that it was a shot coming from Anthony Joshua that opened up that cut above the eye of Povetkin. Povetkin in the black trunks, champion Anthony Joshua in the white trunks. And Povetkin, again, 39 years old, 13-year pro. His only loss to Vladimir Klitschko, October of 2013. He has won seven fights in a row since. And he lost in a decision, which says a lot for him being six foot two and a half. Losing a decision to a great Hall of Fame champion like Klitschko is no shame. Oof, they both want the home run right there. Dangerous hooks. You see short power shots. He knows exactly what to do when he gets inside. He, he throws that little left, that left hook and make both hands busy. You can see that the difference in styles. Joshua out, out oh, landing with jabs 30 to 2, at least by the stats. I mean, there is one man jabbing, and there's another man throwing hard power shots. That looping right hand caught Joshua's attention, but it started with a jab to the left, to the right side of Joshua's body. So that's what Pavekin's so good at. He makes you think of two places at once, and there it is again, a right hand over the top. Hey, that's what Robert McCracken was worried about in this fight, the looping shots, how, how smart he is in throwing those and being deceiving with them. And those shots are very accurate. And look at those feints, too. It's rare that you see heavyweights faint, but right there you see Pavekin fainting like three, four, five times. Those faints, and then Joshua returns it. But look at the hook. The hook is Pavekin coming in with a purpose. Yeah, throwing hard hooks. You're right, right? Yes. Sergio, good point on the faints. You can see just even stepping in and keeping Joshua at bay as he throws more uppercuts and hooks. And look at how awkward that, that combination was. That's like a Roy Jones type up, uh, uh, combination. He jumped in with a left hook, then the left uppercut, and an overhand right. I mean, that takes athleticism to do that. And these are heavyweight. Well, this is a heavyweight doing it in Pavekin. Anthony Joshua, the champion, bloodied in the first round. There's only a trickle of blood coming out of that nose now, so it's under control. Good body shot there by Pavekin. Joshua's keeping that right hand up, which rightfully so because that left hook can do some damage. We're in the fifth round already. I mean, they, uh, it's it's so exhilarating that I'm looking. I'm, we're in the fifth round. We were the moving fifth, in the fifth round. That Pavekin might be winning. Yeah. Uh, th th there's been tremendous action from the start in this fight. You cannot look away for a second. Okay. See that right hand he threw to the body right there was just to set up the one up top, and he's gonna do it again. Tricky fighter, cagey fighter this Pavekin is. Joshua throwing the jabs there at the end of that round. They swat gloves once again, and we are through five. It is moving here at Wembley.
in the early going. There's the sharp right hand, and then again, Povetkin following up with, like, with the left hand just because he happened to be there and he saw his face red. <laughs> but, and also, uh, Povetkin, he loops those punches, and that's the right punch to throw on a taller man. But he makes that's himself small. He say. makes himself small, Ray. Povetkin makes himself small. He, he, he lowers himself and he explodes up. He's been making a career doing that, and that's the reason I saw uh, th these being potential problems for Joshua because I know how good Beckin is at springing up like that. Again, it is much cooler now. It's about 50 degrees. These guys in a full sweat. The rain has stopped. We're in round six. 80,000 plus here at Wembley Stadium in London. Anthony Joshua has become a superstar here in Europe. He is the man putting them into stadiums, fight after fight, but it is all on the line here tonight against Povetkin, who has come in game and focused. That's what I want to see from Joshua. Just go back to the jab, touching him. See, let let Povetkin jump in with those left hooks and let him miss punches for once. You know, flash your heads accidentally. Good hook there by Joshua. Yes. Now gets some success and tries to let the hands fly. I was going to say, I love, because I love when Joshua throws his left hook. It's a thing of beauty and, and power. And it's tricky, too, because sometimes he throws a left hook and then it, I mean, a, a jab, a left jab, and then he turns it into a left hook in the last second. Very smart. Anthony Joshua has Wembley booked for April 13th in anticipation of another mega fight. Hopefully, we thought Deontay Wilder in a heavyweight unification. Again, Wilder has Tyson Fury December 1st. That's all signed. Joshua had to take care of business here tonight, and he is being more than tested. Good jab by Povetkin as he follows up with the right hand. Good overhand right there by Povetkin. I mean, these are hard shots. Again, when you talk about Sergio, you have the uppercut and hook. You think Mike Tyson, you know, I mean, like, everything's coming from his hips, from his body. How, how, how much can Povetkin uh, keep up his tempo, his pace. But that guy knows how to punch at the right time. I'm pretty sure he can go 12 rounds doing this. This is how he made a career. This is how he yeah. won a gold medal. Look at that tricky overhand right. Joshua had some success. He thought he was having some success, and then he had to watch out for the overhand right of Pavekin. Th that was combinations from both men, and, and good head movement as well. That's what I want to see from Joshua. Just there you go. See? And a lead hook as well. You're right. The jab to the body, Sergio, then the hook. And those are scoring shots from Joshua, and once again, the jab to the body. And it's rare to see a six foot six, big, tall, monstrous man like that to go to the body like that. Just a little jab to the body. It gets your opponent's attention, it breaks him in half, and makes him think about his torso instead of his head. There you go, see? That's, that's what I want a big man to do. He tried it right there. Sneak it upstairs with the left hook. That's clever stuff right there. <laughs> Good movement. Right, right, Joshua. Back and trying to return the favor. You have to give credit to Joshua. Again, it was this type of fighting that I mentioned earlier rejuvenated the entire heavyweight division. There's nothing dreadful about this. This is, there's no clinching, there's no clutching. This is exciting. Both men's letting their hands go. Both men throwing with bad intentions. A throwback fight in the heavyweight division. And it's back to its full glory with Anthony Joshua. And tonight, yes, Alexander Povetkin. It's a throwback heavyweight fight, but they're fighting like middleweights. I mean, they're very athletic. They're agile. They're, they have nifty feet. Even when they miss, they don't look clumsy. Good shorthand slap there by Joshua, but he has to get what he can get right now because Pavekin is in this fight. Hmm. Well, he made it work there, didn't he? He only had a few inches, but he made it work. Landing with the right hand. When I mention this is like a throwback fight, I'm saying we went through a long stretch of the Klitschko brothers, where the division was ruled by either one of them at any specific time. And I give them full credit, and you can make them Hall of Famers, both of them, if you like. Absolutely. But. You had to yearn a little bit for Bo Holyfield, you know? You had to yearn a little bit for men throwing their hands. And when Joshua fought Vladimir Klitschko, you didn't see any clinching or clutching. You saw guys throwing hands at the heavyweight division. That's what we have here tonight, and we're now to round seven.
You know, these guys remind me of heavy, watching heavyweights throw combinations like these. They remind me of like Riddick Bow and Evander Holyfield type. They threw combinations. They, the Klitschko era was, they were big men. They, they fought behind the jab and then monstrous right hand, but it wasn't really combination punching. It wasn't body punching. It wasn't angles and, and agile, swift moves and foot moves like they are here. This is athletic heavyweights at the yep. best. And with Deontay Wilder out there, undefeated with his tremendous power, there are so many great things that could happen in this division now that could once again captivate the world and transcend the sport of boxing. You can't take anyone late, I tell you. Um, didn't expect this much from, from Beckham. I mean, he, he's holding his own. He's really now you see, in there. It's interesting, too. Ray, Ray Leonard, you spoke about can this pace be kept up by Povetkin, and you see the punches landed and thrown. Joshua with the big edge there in round six as we get to the second half of the fight. I'm going to answer that. Yes, oh, he yes, right hand. hand by Joshua. Ooh. Comes back with a hook. Povetkin now on his heels. He's hurt. Oh, yes. Joshua this steps to his man. A big hook in the right hand. Povetkin through the ropes. It's over. Povetkin, to his credit, able to climb to his feet. He is badly hurt. Joshua trying it's everything, a big right hand. And this is over. There's your test. There's your answer. Anthony Joshua, the heavyweight champion of the world. And nothing you can say about Povetkin that would denigrate that performance. I'm he got no. after it. I'm stunned. It, I am totally stunned. Anthony Joshua, the power behind that. He just has that magic. He has that magic. He, he's already faced adversity. He's gotten, gotten up from knockdowns. Fought through a broken nose. In this fight, it was a close fight. I had Pebekin in this fight, and look, one punch ends it all. He was hurt. He was bloodied early, and for him to come back and had his man hurt, and then a no doubt Ray Leonard, no doubt finish as, oh. as he finished Pebekin off. Joshua, perfect. I mean, took his time and, and threw his punches sharp, and they landed. Had his man in trouble and took advantage of that opportunity. And that is an exhilarating heavyweight fight. Joshua putting his fist up to the crowd here in London and getting a it monstrous wasn't, And it ovation. wasn't easy, though. It was not an easy fight. That's what makes it so great, is that Povetkin, even, he was almost through the ropes. Ivan Karpa, his trainer, looked like he wanted to help him up, which you cannot do. And still, he got up on his feet. That was and, really and even when Steve Gray, the referee, said, step to me, he stepped toward him. He was not quitting. Not any way he was quitting. And he just got finished off by a bigger, better man. Bigger, better, and just as athletic as Povetkin, because Povetkin was really, really impressed me with, that, with its athleticism. But the power and the speed and the, the, the choices of punches that Joshua throws, it's, it's just incredible. He really is a fascinating fighter and a great fighter. That is the severe test. And again, you wonder, all right, is he a great fighter? Is he a good fighter for this era? D is he just big? Is the division not as great as it was? And you see something like this, and you say, all right, hold on. It does harken back to the heavyweights of the 90s when you did have legends roaming the that, ring. That was a Joe Lewis-type right hand. It was a short little right hand. And when they show it again, it was a short little right hook, and the rest was just over and perfect. Once, Beautiful. Because once Joshua hurt his man, he hopped on top of him, but still in control, stayed in control, and his punches were sharp, accurate, and powerful. Look at how short this right hand was. Joe, a la Joe Lewis, I'm telling you, was beautiful. He wasn't landing the big extending punches. It was a little sharp, short right hook, right cross that really got put back, and the rest was just beautiful. Did everything he could, finished with that, oh, does a strafing right hand. Steve Gray, the referee, did a marvelous job. And that was over. And Sergio, you're right. It, Joe Lewis was known for it. Came right off the shoulder like a six-inch punch. Exactly. Joe Lewis style. Joe Lewis would be proud right now of this young man. I mean, he really is incredible. He has magic. 
and just the arsenal, the repertoire being shown as well. The combinations as well. He's a combination puncher. He's just a big athletic machine. He puts you in trouble and he takes advantage of it. He doesn't let up. He doesn't let go. Well, this is why this man puts 80,000 people in this stadium. And you know another thing, Brian? Joshua was able to knock out and put away a man that Klitschko couldn't. That's a good point. Good point. And when you see this power coming back from adversity, you know Deontay Wilder is out there watching. And even when he's hurt, he can come back. Well, I'll tell you what, if Wilder is watching, he needs to be careful because this man is dangerous. His technique is a lot better than Wilder's, I believe. The power is probably just as equally as devastating. It will be a heavyweight clash for the ages. I hope it happens next, and I hope it happens here, because this is incredible. Could happen here April 13th. Ray Leonard, your thoughts on mainly Joshua coming back from being hurt and going through the adversity of this fight. And I, and I saw him. He was, he was hurt. He was in trouble, but he, he, he's such a composed fighter, such a poised fighter, and came back with co combination of his own. Solid combination. Because Povetkin's output may have gone down a bit, but he was not going away. No. He was still he throwing was meaningful hard shots. An he, exhilarating night here at Wembley Stadium. The crowd is fired up. You see in the middle of the ring Michael Buffer and now Joshua. He'd already gone over. Pavetkin was up on his feet as the two men could exchange pleasantries. And there is Pavetkin right there, bloodied up, marked up. But I tell you what, his stock went up too. I have, I, have more, yeah. I have so much more respect for Pavetkin now. Also, and Joshua, he gets better every fight. It's like a student. Only 28 years old in his prime and now building a proud career and legacy in defending his heavyweight championship. We are going to hear from Anthony Joshua as well. Michael Buffer is in the ring for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen. The official time, one minute, 59 seconds. Round number seven, the winner by TKO victory, still the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, the fighting god of the United Kingdom, AJ Anthony Joshua. For anyone that might say that didn't see the fight or later, anybody that's commenting that would say, you know what, he beat a 39-year-old Povetkin. Nope, you just saw it. He beat a motivated, fired up, focused, man on a mission Alexander Povetkin. He had to fight a real dangerous heavyweight tonight. A gold medalist, a once beaten Povetkin. A Povetkin that had over 700 wins and 60 losses in his last 24 opponents with He's fought the better opposition. Joshua, just incredible in his performance tonight. He really is. He fought a great, great fighter, and he was able to put him away. From round one, I was impressed with Pavoka. Pavekin, I should yep. say. Um, boy, power, heart, determination, conditioning. And again, hard shots by both men. I said earlier in the night, both fighters throwing potential night-ending shots throughout. And Joshua emptied the magazine in that last round. I, I, I'm also impressed, again, Povetkin hurt, badly hurt. Just no quit in him, no intention. No. Like, let me climb off my knees. Let me get off the ring apron and get back up. Then the referee looking him in the eye. Take a step toward me. You know, how are you? And then you got to step toward Because if you stay where you're standing, that referee, Steve Gray, would have stopped this fight. But you have to step forward, you have to show, no, 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 I'm, I'm going. Don't stop this. And he didn't. So Joshua got to stop it. Made it even more exciting. Gave the fans what they paid for. Yes. That's a heavyweight 
championship right yep. there. That's the unified heavyweight champion of the world. Incredible. I was impressed with both guys. Absolutely. Five sets of rankings, by the way, that are out there. Look, there's a lot of them, but you can go by the, the, the most prevalent five. Joshua is number one in the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder is number two. Well, Joshua with a huge statement here tonight. It will be Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in December at a site to be determined. All eyes will be on that fight. And then you will look for the negotiations in this fight. But Joshua look, can say, look, I, I, I'm putting 80,000 in the stadium with or without you. I'm defending my three belts. You can defend your one. I think everybody, though, wants to see it. I think Wilder wants to see it. And after this performance, I, I would think Joshua would say, you know what? It's time. Don't you think? I think you know who has the leverage now. Anthony Joshua. Oh, yeah. No question. But Wilder, to his credit, was accepting a lot of different terms, as Chris Mannix had mentioned earlier. Thank you very, very much. Sky, The Zone, everyone involved, thank you very much for your attendance. And especially, before we forget, Team Povetkin. Well said. You stopped a man that's never been stopped. <laughs> Can we give a round of applause for Eddie Hunt, please? Ooh. You can't have everything in life, I suppose. <laughs> Anthony, on the fight. You stopped a man that's never been stopped before, a serious and dangerous contender, former world champion Alexander Povetkin. Your words on your performance and what sort of statement you sent out to the rest of the division tonight? Yeah, definitely. Alexander Povetkin is a very tough challenger. He proved that tonight with good left hooks, good counter punches. But I come in here to have fun, do what I've been working on in the gym and give it my best. I realised he was strong to the head, but I know that he was weak to the body. So I, instead of jabbing to the head, I was just switching it up, and every jab takes a second of breath out of you, so it slows him down. It could have took seven, maybe nine, maybe 12 rounds to get him out of there, but the ultimate goal was to be victorious tonight. How badly were you affected by the nose injury in the first round? Yeah, these shorter guys, they're very good coming through the middle, but let's not worry about that. Tonight's out of the way. Let's figure out what's happening on April 13th. That's what we all want to know. OK, so the obvious question is, who do you want to fight on April 13th? Let's ask the question. I haven't got no mandatories, right? There's no mandatory challenges. No one's going to spring up. We'll see about that, but providing there's no mandatory challenges, who do we want to fight here on April 13th? We'll put a poll out on Twitter. We're going to put a poll out on Twitter because anyone's welcome. As I said earlier, there's always some complications with negotiations, fair dues. But the sport is about what the fans want. Sometimes we have to face our mandatories, which I did tonight. And now that's out of the way, we'll put a poll out to the audience and see what they want April 13th, because it's you guys who make this sport. A lot of people were hoping that it would have been Deontay Wilder in the ring tonight. Can you shed on it any light on why that fight didn't happen from your side? We both done a lot of talking. Look, I'm not in the blame game. It was him, it was me, tit for tat. We both done a lot of talking. And I'm here now. I had a good fight. I got my knockout streak back. I found my right hand. It went missing for a little while. I found it, and it's lining up for April, April 13th. You talked about pressure in the build-up. A lot of pressure that you put on yourself. Were you under pressure to put on that sort of performance tonight? Let me get some water. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. There's no doubt about it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The whole country's rooting for us all, man. Not only me, David Price, Lawrence Okoli, Luke Campbell. Who else is on the undercard? Yeah, the whole country's rooting for boxing. You know, I'm a heavyweight, I'm a world champion, so they get behind us. If it was just about me, I'd just come in there and have fun, but the energy in here spares you on, and I do feel that pressure, I'm not going to lie. How hurt were you at the end of the first round? And are you showing that you are learning? A few years ago, maybe you wouldn't have won that fight tonight. Yeah, a few years ago, maybe I wouldn't have won that fight, but that's credit to my coaching staff, nutritionists, management team people who help me in camp, security, just trying to make my life easier. It's about developing, you know. Sugar Ray Robinson lost. It shows you how tough this fight is, how tough this game is. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to learn. Look, as I said, enough of the talking about my development. That's down to the team. But as I said, April 13th is what I'm really interested in. What's happening here um, in Wembley Stadium again? Who do you think wins out of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury? I'm not too fast to win, if I'm honest. I only concentrate on myself. But good luck to both of them. I wish them well. And uh, may the champion bring himself to the UK and let's have a good dust up. 
if that fight can't be made, would you be interested in going over old ground with your, your old friend Dillian White? <laughs> Where's Dillian? Where is he? He's somewhere amongst the crowd, but he's a serious fighter. That's all I want to fight is serious challenges. We've got respect for each other, mutual respect fighter to fighter. But when it comes down to competition, we're both beasts, we're both lions in the jungle. And the best man has to win. So if Dylan wants to fight here, he's more than welcome as well. Can you still improve? Can you be better? Yeah, 100%. But then again, the tougher the challenge, the harder the performance, the more you learn. So as I said to you earlier, 10 weeks ago, 12 weeks ago at the press conference, this is chapter two. Remember when I said that at the press conference? And I meant it. So we're at a different level now. And I've got to find my feet again. If I, uh, I know you're not a better man, but if, well, you are a better man, but if you were, if you had to pick one name that you're going to face here on April 13th, who would it be? Anyone. I don't want to talk no more about it. Do you know what I mean? There's no contract sign at the minute. So my number one would be Wilder. And then that's it. Look, that's it. Let me not talk about number two, number three. Wilder, that's it, yeah. I'm going to let you go, but I just want to know if you want to say something to all the people that braved the rain. Wembley's a great omen for you, but a lot of people stayed out in the rain today. Was the rain bad? Listen, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for sunshine. Tonight was rainy, but we've had a brilliant summer. We've enjoyed it. And uh, let's just have a great Christmas. It's coming to the end of the year. Let's finish the year on a high. Whatever everyone's doing tonight, be safe. And I'll see you here again in April. Congratulations and well done. Eddie Hearn. Let's just talk about April 13th. Well, that's quite an interview right there, and I like the follow-ups where finally he had to say, all right, well, there's Wilder, and then there's... No, there's Wilder. Because you know if you wanted to go to a poll for the fans, but uh, you might as well just go to Alabama and poll there for Deontay Wilder. Let's go to Chris Mannix. Chris? Well, Anthony, congratulations. Sub 50 degree temperatures, <laughs> cold rain, and yet you still put 80,000 fans here in the building. You made them a little bit nervous early on in this fight. You finished with a knockout. How do you feel about the way you fought? Yeah, it was a clever fight. Sometimes it could be boring. You know, you have to find your feet, find your, your range and so on and so forth. But ultimately, it's about getting there in the end. It took seven rounds. It may have took 10, it may have took 12. Ultimately, it's boxing. And uh, when you do that, the knockout's coming. I got the knockout, I'm happy. But as a champion, it's just about moving on and people want to know what's happening next. So we booked out here April 13th for another good night of boxing. And anyone's welcome to uh, challenge me for my titles. Before I get to that, your promoter, Eddie Hearn, told everybody that would listen that Alexander Povetkin was an extremely dangerous opponent. Did you think he was this dangerous coming in? And what were you thinking after that first round when he buckled you a little bit? Whoa, 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 I didn't buckle. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Do you know what, right? I knew he was a serious challenger. That's what I said to him at the end. When you've uh, been consistent from the amateurs, right through to the pros, got beat to Klitschko five years ago, and managed to stay at the top of your game, you know that's a serious challenger. Do you know what I mean? So he come in tonight. Look, it's his chance to get his hands on the title. All it takes is one punch. He's got a very good left hook, very good overhand. Um, but I had to box clever, make him miss, make him pay. I, you already said you'll be back here in April. I assume you'll wait till after December 1st to see what happens between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Yeah, which is a brilliant opportunity because we'll wait for them. But ultimately, I'm not going to lie to you, I've got the best management team and the best promoter and the best broadcasters with me in the business. So what they'll do is continue searching the perimeters, see who's serious. The venue's booked, the date's booked. Any challenge is welcome. And uh, my management team, my promoting team will do a great job of putting someone here in the opposite corner to me April 13th. Does a win like this make you any more motivated to fight a Deontay Wilder? You, you can answer that question. You put yourself in my shoes. I've got all the belts, I've proven myself tonight. Someone's gonna win all the belt, someone's gonna win that belt um, December 1st. So put yourself in my shoes. And they said, do you wanna fight Wilder here next? You'll probably say yes as well. If all the fans across the world will say yes, and I'm saying I want it as well. So uh, if the stars align, we'll be here for sure. Over in the US, Wilder would say he offered you $50 million. He offered to take $15 million. Did he? he offered, he says, I'm saying he would say that. He offered to come here. What needs to happen for a Deontay Wilder fight to happen in April? He needs to win December, and then we need to sit down and just get the, the little bits out of the way. Do you know what I mean? Remember, we've been negotiating after the uh, Takan fight last year, so it's been a long time negotiating. He said certain things to Dylan. Listen, 
you don't give me the money I want. I ain't got to fight anyone serious for two years, so on and so forth. Dylan showed it on his DMs to the zone. The thing is, there's a lot of back and forth, he said, she said. But ultimately, we're two fighters, two champions in the same division at the same time. So at the end of the day, um, we have to fight each other. Do you know where I'm coming from? It'll be silly of us not to. Dylan stepped up, Molina stepped up, Brazil stepped up, Charles Martin stepped up, Klitschko stepped up, Povetkin stepped up, Wilder will step up, uh, Fury will step up. So it's just a matter of time. You've rarely disappointed. You didn't again tonight. Congratulations, Anthony. Yeah, so this is the launch of the zone, right? It is. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for tuning in and long may it continue. Boxing is on the rise. Thank you.